Hello, everyone, and good evening. It's not too late to wish you all a very peaceful and blessed new year. Um, you know, I'm really delighted to uh, to welcome you all to what is the Mosser Health Foundation Charity's first episode in our new series of informal broadcasts and chats and interviews with fascinating guests and uh, personalities called In Conversation with hosted by myself, Michael McGrath. Now these conversational style interviews have been constructed with one specific goal um, in mind. Now more than ever, we need things to look forward to, don't we? So the goal as always is to bring our community together, our beneficiaries and families, our tribe of muscle warriors across the country, helping everyone feel a little less isolated and a little more engaged and connected. So in this new year, you know, we've got some exciting plans that directly underpin and support the charity's ongoing COVID-19 efforts. And in addition, you know what, we've lined up some really exciting in conversation with guests across the year and more on that very, very shortly. I know that Christmas was a tough time for, for many of us. We missed having loved ones join us, didn't we? We missed seeing uh, close friends. We missed so much, didn't we? And yet, despite the headlines, despite the the darkness of um, winter nights, despite the plan to return to a tier system after uh, mid-February, hope is all around us. I absolutely believe it. Hope is all around us. It's being able to see that there is light. And here at the charity, we're keeping our community very close in all that we're doing at this moment in time. Tonight, I'm sending oceans of muscle warrior positivity to you all. I'm sending healing, uplifting thoughts to those of you who I know are right now struggling a little, who are suffering and who are fighting each and every day, who just need to hear that you're not alone, that you're being thought of, and you are. And I know that for those with muscular dystrophy, those like myself who are clinically extremely vulnerable, otherwise known as CEVs, our time to be vaccinated is approaching, but with the recent new measures to curb the virus announced by our PM on Monday night, we have to exercise the virtue of patience a little more. You know what, today is my, my 300th day of, of shielding, of being locked in, locked down, and we really must continue to protect ourselves, but also others and our loved ones and our friends, yeah. And to all of our hardened uh, shielding families across the UK, I say this, it is the courage to continue that really counts. An attribute that I know our tribe of muscle warrior families possess in spade loads. So let's continue to be kind to one another. Let's continue to cherish our loved ones, cherish our friends. And remember, please, please, that it's those little things that we do each and every day that that really matter, that are important, that those little daily wins just keep moving forwards. I know it's hard, I know it's tough, but just please keep moving forwards. So moving on with tonight's conversation, tonight's entertainment. Yes, I promise you an insightful, entertaining evening, but first up, a few important housekeeping points. Firstly, a safeguarding note, as always, we have eyes over tonight's broadcast, so if any inappropriate comments or behaviours are observed, action will, of course, be taken. Secondly, all episodes are recorded and streamed on the charity's Facebook and YouTube channels, and as always, you can help expand our reach, amplify tonight's episode by subscribing, by commenting, and by sharing, please. And I'm delighted to welcome back, yes, the return of our Submariner friend, who was actually our very first guest way back in May last year, and who, by the way, is now a fully fledged muscle warrior. Give it up, please, for former submarine commander, Ryan Ramsey. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining us uh, this Wednesday evening, Ryan. How's it going? Hi Ryan, can you? Uh, yeah, can sorry, you hear me? So, so there's the first piece of the uh, <laughs> on mute. So, uh, so you didn't have to say that. Most common phrase used during lockdown, by all accounts. You're on mute. Well, anyway, how, how it's great to have you uh, with us this evening. How's it going? 
It's great to be back, Michael. It's it's, it's been tough, with, without a doubt. It's been a, a very tough year, and I think for um, for, for me personally, uh, maintaining perspective has been a, absolutely vital for all that, and a bit of context as well. So when I think it's tough, I compare myself to others that have it way harder than I do, um, and, and that gives me, you know, sort of levels me out and balances me out. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been hard work. How was how was um, what did Christmas look like in your in your home so so christmas was great um you know small affair uh, I, I didn't get to see family um that there was there was all those issues that everybody else has gone through so so it's not not unique to me yeah. um new year's was a bit weird to be quite frank well, so what just, happened just, on new year's just sat watching tv what <laughs> spending my time with jules holland kind of a kind of a, a weird um weird experience and hopefully next year i won't repeat that are, are you traditionalists in your family um yes i think i think in reality and, and all my friends as well you know that the whole bit for new year's is get together with friends uh see the new year's in with with folk who are um not like-minded but you know a wide variety of friends and lo- lots of my um navy colleagues we all get together so or ex-navy colleagues should i say we all get together and that's just a fantastic event so i, I did quite miss that this year lots of jugs of lemonade i'm sure Pretty much that, and soda water, obviously. Absolutely, no, quite, quite right, quite right. So, you know, Ryan, I've got to ask the question. You know, it was May when we chatted um, yes. last year. So, gosh, look where we are. Look where we are now. So, what's been what's been getting you through periods of lockdown? So, um, I think that there's there's three elements for me. The first the first one is I've really enjoyed helping other people. I mean, I, at the very beginning of lockdown, or the first lockdown. Um, I felt quite helpless because um, I didn't, I didn't, I, I was so used to having um, the ability to help people and everything else. And of course, whilst I'm not in the Navy, I'm not a critical worker. Uh, I don't feel like I'm doing anything. I'm running a business and, and making money effectively. And that, that didn't feel very comfortable. And so um, what I did do was help as many organizations as I could uh, to cope with lockdown and, and learn the skills of dealing with isolation uh, and that felt really, really re- rewarding. And um, and then, of course, we came out of lockdown. But I was already, uh, I, and not, but I'd already said it's going to happen again, and you need to prepare. So, what are the lessons learned? So, I go to these organisations and say, "Have you learned the lessons from the first one? What were those, and how are you going to implement that? Because it's coming back, whether you whether you think so or not. We can be optimistic, but let's let's be pessimistic or realistic, and and prepare for that." So, so, so that helped me um, quite, quite a bit. I think giving back. The other bit was um, music. Uh, m- my love of um, music was enhanced by the fact I couldn't do anything else. And mm. so, listening to new genres of music, um, I played the guitar badly, but a classical guitar badly, and um, trying to learn new songs on that. Um, making music as well. So I've got a piano and. Um, trying to write my own songs and stuff like that and I can't sing but I can still write <laughs> quite a bit of music part, so, part, of, part uh, of tonight's show is we're gonna we're gonna do a sing-along you, you, oh, you yeah. know <laughs> <laughs> okay so 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 those things and I think those small things and small wins on a daily basis for me um have, have been a really good uh way of getting for it dealing with everything on a daily basis as opposed to that long-term vision and everything else, and it's not dissimilar to how how it was on board the submarine. To be to be frank, did you take your guitar on board the sub? I, I did, yeah. So so um, so I, I, I took um, on the long. We went on a very long deployment. I think I shared this last time that we went on two hundred eighty-six day deployment, and I took a guitar to sea with me, with the premise that I was going to learn Cavitano by John Williams, which is a uh, deer hunter uh, music. Yeah. Um, and I think at the very beginning, so I like playing the guitar and it's up up in the op- operations room. So you've got all the people doing all, all the um, driving the submarine, fighting the submarine in my little cabins right at the, right the end of that. And uh, and I'd go and sit in there and play the guitar. And I think at the beginning, they, they you know, they had to listen to that rubbish, to be frank. <laughs> but towards the end of it, because um, I'd learned it, it took me a good six, seven months and I could play it really well by then. Uh, and I could play a whole load of other songs by then. Everybody was... Um, Everybody was, uh, they, they quite liked it. They said they could tell, you know, they found it quite relaxing, which, um, or they told me that anyway. So, so from the deer hunter, did you master Stairway to Heaven? I didn't. I did, do you know, I didn't try that. So I stuck, I stuck at the classical music piece. 
Yeah. So I pick classical because I think um, so many people do the other the other stuff, and for me the classical bit was so complicated. You know, the plucking of strings and mm. I'm moving my fingers unnecessarily there, but <laughs> but but that kind of stuff. Um, no, we'll go there. Let's go there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, Trumpet. I, the question I wanted to ask was in terms of the, the just sorry, just fixating on the guitar a little bit. You know, so I happen to know that uh, a member of my family has a beautiful guitar. Um, but as, as yet, I don't believe he has actually got it out and started to, you know, tr try to make it work for him and 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 play some beautiful guitar sounds. And um, my son-in-law I'm speaking about, I don't know if he's tuning in this evening, but um, if he is, let me know uh, by the name of Jake. And so what 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 um, any any top lessons you would you would give him? Because it's kind of collecting dust in the corner. It's a beautiful guitar. No, you it's should. Yeah, I think I think two elements. First one is I I, I'm, I can't read music, so I, okay. I did it by tablature, okay, and, and that made it so easy. Honestly, it was just so so easy, and and just the reward when it uh, is frustrating when you don't get it right, yeah, and it's just brilliant when it goes right, yeah, yeah, and the moment it goes right, and, and it's sometimes it's almost only once you get it right, but as soon as you get that yeah. seminal moment when it when it's right, it's just fantastic. But with YouTube today, you can just go on YouTube and you know get help and you know um, insights and guidance, can't you? That's hey, listen, awesome. some people jumping on the chat room already and leaving some comments. Um, clearly, you've mobilised uh, some of your friends, which is wonderful to see. So Stephen Bell says hi, uh, great guy, Big Ryan uh, on Turbs, uh, Turbs ten years ago with him, Turbs, Turbulent, yeah, that's HMS Turbulent, okay. HMS Turbulent, very good. Uh, thanks for that, Stephen. Any other questions or observations or comments about uh, about Ryan that you'd like to share this evening? That would be all all the good ideas, good little insights would be good. And Gary, Gary Hannah says, um, best CEO I had, great guy. How much did you pay him, uh, Ryan? <laughs> I, I think we got him promoted to being an officer. Okay. Very good. <laughs> very good. So yeah, like, well, they, did, they did it themselves, to be honest. He did it himself. It very, both, both are great guys. And it was a great crew. And I always say that, that the whole bit for me during during that period of time, I was just lucky to be part of a, a brilliant crew. And um, it was fantastic. Excellent. You, you made a little comment earlier about that feeling of helplessness. Yes. And, and, and that's a feeling that is um, is prevalent in a, in a lot of our families across the country, a sense of helplessness and distress and anxiety and so on. One or two little observations or, or tips perhaps just in terms of when you felt perhaps helpless, when you were below the waves, I mean, I don't know, were there moments in time where you felt utterly helpless and you had to find a way through that? Yeah, well, I, I talk about a day called, uh, there's a couple of times actually, but um, I talk about a day called Sweaty Sunday when we when we lost all the air conditioning plants and um, and major major casualties and nearly lost a submarine actually that day. Um, and, and periods during that, um, although I don't think anybody in the crew ever realized it, but I felt completely helpless at that point. Everything was out of our control. And uh, and I think it goes back to um, focusing on the small wins. And so when I remember this one moment when 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 I when I listed up everything that was going wrong, and I remember going, oh, and I'm, I'm not religious, but going, God, just what else can you throw at me right now? And what else can you throw at us? And you're watching your own crew, people, you know, fall down in your own, and that's horrible, really horrible. And then, and then for me, it was find the small win. And as soon as we started the small win, I thought, right, that's it. Let's let's just build on those small wins. Just continually do that. And I think that's the same for where we are now. I mean, the small win can be that you cook a great meal and, and something different. I mean, the amount of cooking I've done over um, over the and tried loads of things I would never normally cook. And some have been some have been. A, absolutely inedible but some have been absolutely fantastic and come, on, no, come on give me a give me a fantastic um oh, so you've got, um, i bought uh samosas I haven't, i've never made samosas before that that yeah. was um that was really good uh tried some new i like making curries but tried some new curry dishes that's been absolutely fantastic never made risotto in my life but now i make risotto that i wouldn't go to a restaurant to eat because i think this is better yeah. it so requires those... it requires the virtue of, of patience doesn't it with the risottos yeah, it does, and I, I think the whole the whole bit is just find the small win, and just savor that as best you can. And it doesn't matter how small it is, whether the house is tidy, whether you've managed to um, 
do you know just do a couple of things that you'd never normally do or you've done mm -hmm. things that you normally do but do it well and then that gives you positivity because I, th I think the things that are out of out of our control for example now government decisions uh, covid response um we, we can't do anything about that we can mm. but what we can do is concentrate internally and and we yeah. can we can be really frustrated with how awfully it's being managed or run and get angry about it but it adds no value and so so i think we just have to find the small things and concentrate on those it's good advice casey says hello another maybe another crew member from your turbs days hello casey yeah <laughs> um, so any questions Casey any further insights about Ryan let us know please um, <laughs> and, uh, um, so Sarah's made an observation that her cousin was a chef on 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 the, su the submarines um, is it true that baked beans are really dangerous and um, uh, apparently he didn't put them on the menu I'm not quite sure where we're going with that particular observation um, <laughs> but I, let's I, talk I, about sweaty I, Sundays again because I mean, yeah, sure. in, in, in interesting phrase, sweaty Sunday. Did do you have particular phrases for Monday through Saturday? No, no, it was just a really bad day, and yeah. um, and in fact, we we sailed from uh, Fajara in the uh, United Arab, Arab Emirates, um, and as as we went out on the surface, about two and a half hours away from um, two and a half hours away from uh, Fajara, all the air conditioning plants failed. And, and really quickly, I mean, it was only a two and a half hour event, but in, in that period of time, um, temperature inside got up to 60 degrees Celsius in the after compartments, 100% humidity, and about 40 to 45 degrees Celsius in the forward compartments. And then all the systems started failing. Um, so hydraulics was get, hydraulics going down, ship control uh, systems were going down. Um, they couldn't fix the problem because uh, they didn't know what the problem was at the time. And then there was no way of there was nowhere to go, so you, you couldn't go back because um, by the time you got there, people would would die. Um, there's no help around, so you know that that you could get a helicopter out, but it it would, it would take half an hour to get there, and then it could only take a few people off at a time. So we had to fight to put that we were on our own, and and the reality was um, the amount of information coming in, uh, the amount of casualties we had at the time, we lost some real key players and other people just jumped in and did it. I mean, it was testament to everybody in that crew um, mm -hmm. that people took over roles where they didn't do it. The most junior guy hadn't been on board very long. He was the guy that realized that actually mm -hmm. the, um, the, mm -hmm. uh, the carbon dioxide um, system wasn't, wasn't working. Um, he was the guy that did that and then went and fixed, you know, got, got the emergency systems on. And everybody played their part in it without having to be told to do anything and get the information to make decisions. And then the only way out of it seemed to be a bit counterintuitive, which was to dive the submarine. And so we dived the submarine, went into deep water where we could cool the submarine down and then started recovering the process. And I tell you what, just amazing, amazing people. Individual heroism is the way that I put it with collective, um, collective, heroism too and then humor i mean i remember going this is the really weird thing so all that stuff's going on casualties all over the place and i go to the galley and the chef is still cooking and i'm looking at him going are you all right and he goes because i went around to see everybody to check out i said are you all right and he goes um he goes uh well the beef's all right but the potatoes have had it and I thought, in all this adversity, submarine humour just keeps keeps going. And um, yeah, and we got through it. We 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 survived, and we were we were back operating literally the same day. So, what was the time frame just for for our our listeners this evening? You know, when when were you you know former commander? So when were you commanding? Yeah, sure. So so um, so I took over in November two thousand eight, and I handed it over to um the guy took over for me on december the 14th 2011 okay. and um that was a sad day to hand it over mm. is turb still operational no she decommissioned six months later so she was okay. quite she was 28 years old when um when when i i was i was in command so is that is that an old is that considered an old sub well, in interestingly, design life is usually about 20 to 25 years. Um, but because the maintenance and because the crews that operate them uh, are really good, they, they usually extend. So I think some of the strategic missile submarines at the moment, are, uh, 
the 30 year mark and still plan to go for another five, 10 years. So, um, so it's, it's testament to the people that build those machines because they're the most complex thing that, that exists. Um, most complex military machine, more complex than the space shuttle operating in an area that's less explored than space. If you imagine the, the, the ocean is less explored than, than space mm-hmm. and it's all, um, it's all high end operations and, uh, you know, real mm-hmm. risk involved in all of that. So the, the submarine services is, is absolutely amazing at what it does. So just to pick up on your point about complexity, of equipment and uh, electronics. You're saying that the complexity of equipment and electronics on board a sub is more complex than that of a space shuttle. That's correct. Okay. Right. Considerably more complex. Yeah, yeah. If you imagine the amount of systems and everything else that that are involved in in getting, a submarine is a lot bigger than a space shuttle as well, if you think about it that way. Um, Space shuttles are an an aircraft that goes into space effectively, Mm. but, the submarine is just way more complex than that. So, um, and, and it's all the external bits. Because you think about the, the the complexity of a torpedo in the 21st century, or the complexity of a Tomahawk land attack missile in the 21st century. I mean, this thing, you fire it out and it lands with pinpoint, and I mean pinpoint accuracy. Mm. Um, and, and just everything that goes into making those uh, weapons mm. and that system work is incredible. Are you a believer in Trident? I, I am, yeah. I, th- I think the, the the reality is is that since the, since the strategic deterrent has been in place, we haven't had mm-hmm. a a global conflict or even state, you know, big state on state conflict, mm-hmm. and that's primarily because of Trident and 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 other nations have it as well. And mm-hmm. as much as we wouldn't, you know, I think if you go speak to a captain of one of those submarines, he'll tell you the same thing, which is as much as you'd rather wouldn't, um, if he has to, he will. Mm. And and, mm. and that, that's the thing. So what it does is st- it stops other nations deciding that they can exert power. It's, it's, it's the ultimate deterrence. Joe uh, Fortune says, my dad served with you. Bracket oh, cookie. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, a cookie means um, maybe you're involved in chefing and perhaps. No, that's his nickname. That's his nickname, Cookie. <clears throat> Thanks for joining us, Cookie. Um, Casey Owen says, um, remember a weekend in Cameron Lodge where Paul Gascoigne was staying and also the run ashore in Gibraltar. Okay, we're not going to talk about either of those. But... Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, another question just popped in. What's the most exciting or unusual place that your that your career has taken you? Oh, so I've been, I've been some pretty, um, pretty amazing places, actually. Um, so I think when I joined my first ship before I joined the submarine service, I joined it in, in Brazil, which was, okay. which is quite amazing. Yeah. Um, then at Hong Kong, that was pretty yeah. awesome as a, as a place, uh, like Dubai, that was, that was really good. Um, Gibraltar is always fun. Yeah. So, so you, you do get the chance to go, uh, but probably, sorry, my favorite place I'd say is Tromso. Okay. In North in Norway. Iceland, Norway, that yeah. the words. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, and Iceland as well, actually, for that matter. That's that's yeah. that's a good visit. So you go to some um you go to some amazing places. And I, I think probably the as you go through your career, at the very beginning of your career, you probably take it for granted. And then towards the end of your career, you're trying to make the most of those destinations because you know you know you're not going to get that chance again. So in all these des- destinations, uh, did you have many parishes? Uh, no, so, so the, the parish is a um, is a course where they train submarine captains. So I, I was lucky enough to uh, teach that that course as well just before I left the navy. Uh, and and in effect, if I put it into perspective, so uh, the course has been running since nineteen seventeen. Um, less than a thousand people have undertaken the course, and yeah. and it produces submarine captains. And the failure rates, um, you know, sixty percent, sixty percent pass rate, forty percent fail, but it produces the best people to lead on submarines and then out of that less than 60 people have ever taught it so it's, um, it was a really privileged position to give back and influence the the future of the um, submarine commanders sure do, do, do you miss your days at sea so, so I, I've had that question a lot actually recently and what what I miss somebody asked me do I miss being in the navy and I don't uh, I, I it was a great career uh, and I love my time in it yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm in a different career mode now. What I really miss is I miss Turbulent massively. Uh, I miss the submarine service, but you don't really leave because all the submariners keep in touch anyway. Yeah. I definitely miss the camaraderie. Yeah. And I, I think finding a sense of purpose in the civilian world is sometimes mm. difficult. 
Yeah. Whereas on board a submarine, you've got it straight away. Is it like an, an alumni alumni sort of network that you keep in touch it's with? It's just friends. Everybody stays in touch. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. And it's it's not um, on rank or anything else like that. It's just all the submariners stay in touch. Yeah. It's fantastic. Ollie says, hi, best parishers ever with this guy. Um, oh. uh, Simon Taylor's jumped on. Um, oh, happy, right. ha happy New Year, Ryan. So, happy New Year, Simon. It's, it's nice. Thank you for jumping on, everyone. So, listen, when we were chatting uh, recently, we, you, you spoke about the role that um, – the positivity plays during times of of darkness and why having perhaps a positive mindset right now is so so important so in terms of your your submarine career perhaps you could give me you know a couple of examples maybe one low light in other words one moment in time that you for you was perhaps filled with with darkness and distress and and how you coped how you managed and then maybe mm. perhaps uh, you know one amazingly positive highlight one overriding memory that perhaps moves you to a place of of absolute joy and positivity, perhaps of hope. I don't know. So a couple of yeah. Uh, so, so I mean, there's there's many of both. I think so. Uh, so so it's, it's it's not all fun. But um, if if I gave you this, this might seem quite strange as as a low light, but my last day in command of HMS Turbulent was really sad, and I remember um, we had, we had a really great day. To be fair. But the last moment of, because we'd been at sea, it was the last day after that long deployment. We went to, uh, we, we played Uckers, which is a Navy game. I ate steak. Uh, I got to see everybody and say goodbye. They gave me some presents, which was fantastic. But I hadn't really sunk in until, and I had to drive the submarine up back round to, um, into Plymouth Harbour. And I remember being, uh, stood on the bridge and um, got it alongside, drove it alongside, and then you say this thing, which is finished with main engines and steering, which means that's it. The boat's alongside, and you can shut everything down effectively. And uh, and and I said it's been a privilege. And then and then I was crying, and I was so sad. And it took me ages to get over that bit. But the the mm. plus side was seeing for me was um, not only seeing my family because I hadn't seen them for a while, but mm. looking at everybody else. Um, because we've come alongside and we've got through everything and they're all smiling and they're all happy and they know they're going to see families and stuff like that. And that gave me the positive bit to snap myself out of the negativity that I'd probably driven myself because that was quite a sad experience for me. Mm. Um, in other ones, when uh, when things have been going really, really wrong, um, and I, I can't share some of those things when they've gone really, really wrong uh, just because of classification stuff, um it, once again it's been it's going wrong um however we're going to recover from this one and two focus on something positive so i'd find something small and just focus on that um and i, I used to spend a lot of time reading books and the reason i read books i now know i didn't know at the time but the reason i was reading books especially when i was uh when i was a captain was to try and justify some of the submarines uh, so the decisions i was making even when it was going wrong to see how other people dealt with it when it was going wrong so, so for those bits, and if I talk about highlights, that there's been so many highlights. I mean, I've been privileged and lucky. I've served with three different um, submarine forces. I served with the Dutch Navy. Um, I served with the United States Navy for two years as well, uh, and and predominantly with the Royal Navy. And and I've I've done some absolutely incredible things. But the one thing that gives me real happiness, I tell you, was um, giving submarine dolphins out when people qualify. That is just the best moment ever, seeing all the hard work that they, those guys and now girls have put in to get to uh, get the qualification. And then for me to to give the dolphins and see them, and you give it a, a, a thing of rum and they have to down it um, and catch the dolphins in their teeth. But just seeing the happiness, because it's such a happy moment to know that you've suddenly become part of yeah. a massive family. And it's, it's not dissimilar to, to you got you know, you, you guys are a massive family effectively, aren't you? Yeah, and it's all being being part of that, and I think that that's that's probably the biggest one for me. It's a bit like getting your gold, your you know your wings, I suppose, as a pilot. Sim similar. Yeah, to. absolutely. So I've got to ask, what what exactly is this game that you referred to earlier called Uckers? Okay, well, what it's not is Ludo, although um, okay. amazingly, it looks like Ludo. Okay. <laughs> so so <laughs> it's got a um, it's got. A load of tactics and everything else and people do, do you know it's amazing when, you, when you're on board the submarine you're at sea 
um, you, you've got no internet effectively, you've got no connection, there's no Facebook, there's nothing else. But board games and conversations become a real focus and, and that yeah. board game in particular becomes a real focus. Okay. Um, so eight, yeah, Uckers just sat there Two. you can either have two or four players, the board looks like a Ludo board, uh, you follow the same way around. There's a few uh, subtle um, Royal Navy nuances to how you play it. Um, okay. And it's all about trying to trying to win, and and we call it strategic. There's a bit of cheating that goes on in there called timber shifting when you try and move. Well, I, yeah. I'd never do that, obviously, but timber shifting. When, you, right. <laughs> when you're moving the pieces just a little bit further. So, um, but it, it's just amazing. It's it's a really good game, and it focuses. And people go and watch the games as well, which is when you think about it, why would you go and watch Ludo? But people do. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, and it, it brings everybody together, and it's just such a happy game. You know, you can have the nice. you have a really bad day, but you can have a great game of Uckers at the end of it, Brilliant. unless you unless you lose massively, and then that's pretty bad as well. So, brilliant. I like it. Um, Neil Jones says, um, uh, "What year did Ryan attend Parishers, and which boat?" Okay, so um, year two thousand, yeah. and um, it started off on HMS Splendid. And then um, it ended on HMS Triumph, and okay. during the Triumph one, we 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 hit the bottom, which wasn't very good, but all survived that. So um, so message yeah. From, message from Dave Diffie. He said, "Uckers!" Oh, exclamation Diffie. mark! Exclamation mark! Yeah, two little, two little, two little um, they're not happy faces; they're crying, laughing faces. But <laughs> I think I think he's talking about my. Uh, so so, so I, at the very beginning, I wasn't a, a big fan of Uckers, and I think it was only when I got to about uh, mid thirties that I started to enjoy the game. Brilliant, Ollie uh, Ollie Calamano has checked in. He said, "Proudest day in any Submariner's life." That's the receiving of the dolphins. Yeah, yeah, I still remember mine, and that was nineteen ninety one. In Excellent. Denmark, in Denmark, um, uh, and Dave Diffie said also says hi George. Does that mean something to you? Uh, no, <laughs> it doesn't mean anything to me. I'm afraid. <laughs> so we we touched on um, uh, we touched when we last spoke back in May. I remember uh, this element of the conversation um, quite well. We touched on your disdain, your your derision of um, submarine movies like for example the hunt for red october so so ryan i thought that as part of tonight's convo we, we we've lined up a little entertainment for, for for you and our viewers okay um and i'm going to show in a moment um uh, a couple of slides and ask you basically to give us a a comment or two you know your perspective if you like or you know, kind of a reality check on six movies uh, that many of those uh, watching tonight i suspect will have seen uh, perhaps even being riveted by, okay? But before I, before we, we do those two slides, I just wanted to set the scene for everyone uh, and, and set the mood uh, by playing a short uh, video clip. In fact, I believe it was the trailer of a film that I know had the nation captivated. Over to Grace. So, dust boot. That's great. Um, the claustrophobic world of a World War II German U-boat. <clears throat> and, and in the film description, they, they use words like boredom, filth, and sheer terror. 
did you have any of those emotions at all? Uh, not so much the filth, but definitely boredom and sheer terror. So, yeah. so I, I, I describe submarine operations as 70% boredom and 30% pure adrenaline rush. Okay. And, and probably within that 30%, there's a 10% of pure terror that goes with yeah. it. <laughs> yes. um, so, so it's, uh, it is a great movie uh, and even better than the movie as a series because um, I can't remember how many parts the series series is, but that really shows you the boredom because some, some of the episodes are really dull, but that's yeah. exactly what it was like. Yeah. 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 I know, I know that Grace, who's managing our, our, our internal skewer, she's just popped a message on the chat and saying, this would not make me want to ever get on board a submarine. <laughs> <laughs> they, those, are, those are very old submarines. You know, submarines now are a lot bigger than that. So, um, but the guys in the wolf packs, if you, if you read the books about them, and, uh, and I was privileged enough in my early, uh, not to meet um, German submariners, but privileged enough in my very early uh, part of my career to meet some of the Second World War um, British submariners, including uh, um, Petty Officer Gold, who, who won a Victoria Cross, um, and, and one of the guys that um, uh, captained an X-Craft. And it was just, um, they're, they're so humble, pe just really humble people who've done amazing things. So, um, yeah. Are there, are there many, um, many submariners that have received the Victoria Cross? Yeah, there are. So, so the submarine service has um, really quite a proud heritage with that. And, and the number of um, VCs is, is quite high compared to yeah, any of the other services. Oh, uh, double figures or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's well over in double figures. So I think it's, it's, it's between, tw I should know this, shouldn't I? Between 12 and 15. So, so uh, Grace, if I could just ask you to pop up a slide for me, please. Um, and Ryan, I just wanted to get some observations from you. Uh, on, so we, we just talked a little bit about Dust Boot. Have you come across this film, Down Periscope? I, ha I have, yes. Yeah. So it, it, it is a very good movie. And um, strangely, you'd watch it and think it's a comedy, and it is a comedy, but strangely, there are so many things that are true. So it's probably more realistic than watching Hunt for Red October. You've got a thing about Hunt for Red October, I can tell. <laughs> Oh, we'll come on to that one in a minute. Um, the one, the, the, the image on the right. Um, Captain Nemo. Captain Nemo, yeah. Yeah. Any, any, not, any, any thoughts on, on, on that? Not, not realistic. No. Although, it'd be, be quite a nice cabin he had. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very good. Down Periscope, I know that was, um, um, was it the uh, captain to the USS Stingray, which was a kind of very old diesel driven submarine that basically seen better days. Yes. Um, and are, are all submarines, uh, I mean, a good proportion of them still diesel or is that, are, are they being phased out? Uh, so, so the Royal Navy doesn't have any diesel submarines anymore. So okay. they phased them out in the 90s and okay. went to an all nuclear fleet. But many nations now, I mean, there's over 50 nations now with submarine capability and, and it's built. I just saw that Myanmar has just bought a submarine. Um, so, and the, the, the diesel submarines, uh, are, 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 there's more of those than there are the nuclear ones. So, so our fleet of submarines are all nuclear. They are, yeah, nuclear powered. And then yeah. you've obviously got the, so two, two types, you've got hunter killer submarines, which are nuclear powered, but conventionally armed. And then you've got the strategic missile submarines, the SSBNs, ballistic missile submarines, and they're nuclear powered and they're, they're armed. Beneficiaries, one of our muscle warrior beneficiaries, uh, Jean Luca, has uh, just popped in a question. He said, um, Have you ever seen a giant octopus? <laughs> no, I've, seen, I've seen many things, but not one of those. I saw Absolutely. killer whales going through, I, I tell you what, going through the Gibraltar Straits on the surface in 2011 and then looked down by the side and two killer whales um, riding, riding the waves. That was incredible. I have to say what's incredible is that the person that gets the award so far for the best question goes to uh, Jean-Luc uh, Giant <laughs> Octopus. Wonderful. Was, was that a, I wonder if that was a family discussion before the question was popped up there. Um, so I'm going to ask Grace just to go to the next slide. I know these are your favourite ones coming up. Okay. So uh, K-19 is a little bit depressing at best but um a good good movie in in what it says crimson tide um that's just full full of, i mean the story about crimson tide was that 
it was taken over by uh, the guy that it was initially produced and the, and the US Navy were on side with it. And then it got taken over, the direction got taken over by the guy that did Pulp Fiction, uh, which is why it ended up like it did. So, um, so n- not as realistic as, as you'd think, although procedurally it's good. And then The Hunt for October, the book is amazing. Sean Connery is an awesome actor. I love Sean Connery. Um, but for me, I really struggle with The Hunt for October just in many ways so you'd rate it on a scale of one to ten ten being outstanding uh i'll go for a five Mm. moving on okay (laughs) um adam thornton says ryan was the best captain i ever served under i was his wrecker and whenever times got tough he was the first on the scene to lift spirits and refocus us all best time in the navy was definitely on turbulent oh. thanks adam that's, that's makes me feel really good thank you thank you for that um let's have a quick look there now lots of lots of uh, observations and questions going. where's the classic where, where are the classic films such as we dive at dawn that's a really good point yeah we dive at dawn great movie um black and white john mills gary henna says can't beat hunt for red october well, we can agree to disagree on that. Yeah. Leighton <laughs> Taylor says, um, I thought that Verne's submarine was quite was quite realistic for the 19th century. That's an yeah. interesting one. Somebody with another question is, just describe your cabin in a nutshell. Oh, yeah, okay. So if you imagine um, a downstairs, small downstairs, bar- well, a largest downstairs bathroom, it, it was effectively about 10 foot long, about three foot wide, um it had this uh sofa bed thing so it was a bed that turned into a sofa it had a sink in it um which which is all part of the same thing and then and then you have lots of uh information so I had a communications box had a sonar screen um a tv um and and that was about it really i yeah. mean it was really really tiny like a like a 72 inch plasma screen in your in your cabin it wasn't that big <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the smallest one they could find. <laughs> um, uh, thanks. So good, you're, you're a good sport on the films. I, I appreciate it. There, there are some other films I just wanted to run past you. It's a 1958 film called Run Silent, Run Deep, oh, yeah. um, which is um, you know, a US sub commander obsessed with sinking a certain Japanese ship um, and, and basically butts, butts heads with his, with his first officer and, and his crew. So, Ryan, I, I, I could ask the question did you? Did you butt heads at all with with any first officers? No, not really. So my 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 leadership style was um, everybody should input before I make a decision, and so and then at least we've all had some input to make that decision, and therefore it's our decision as opposed to mine. Yeah. So um, yeah, it was it was it was really it was really it was easy working with the teams that I had. It was fantastic, and I was I was lucky enough to have. Uh, during my time in Turbulent, I had two brilliant uh, exos who both went on to command um, and did it really better than better than I could have. And uh, one went on to teach submarine captains as well and did that better than I did. So I feel quite quite pleased to have been part of their journey. Excellent. So quick fire, quick fire questions. What boats has Ryan served on from Neil Jones? Oh my God, loads of them. So so uh, really quickly, HMS Opportune, HMS Opossum. H and LMS Zelu, which means sea lion. H and LMS Warus, so those are Dutch ones. Uh, then I came back to H Miss Spartan, H Miss Talent, uh, H Miss Trenchant, then H Miss Torbay, um, and then I worked for the Sea Training Organisation. So I went on loads of submarines during that period of time, and then finally H Miss Turban. Thank you. Andy Coles was good too, Ryan. Yeah, Lovely. from Matthew Ling. Oh yeah. So Matt Matt was uh, what, uh, chief chief ops for for me on on board Turbulent. Yeah, Andy Coles was a good guy. Still is a good guy. Russell <laughs> Russell Ives, uh, do we now have women serving on submarines? I think you've already answered that. Yeah, we do, and and that's a, that's a really good thing. So 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 for me, um, do you know the great thing? I, I used to they used to make you put a um, an equality and diversity uh, paragraph on on it was a requirement and you had a health and state safety yeah. statement and this was in, t- in when I, when I took them on and I changed mine to say that that actually because we're submariners first and everything else second it doesn't matter whether you're black white Catholic Protestant gay straight male or female because you've got that set of dolphins first and everybody's had to earn that and that becomes a real leveler. 
Paul Peacock talks about uh, the book One of Our Submarines by Edward Young. He said, would you recommend the book, yes or no? Yeah, I would. Um, th there's a load of uh, great books out there um, about uh, submarines. I, I wrote one as well, and all the, all the money for that goes to, um, goes to charities. So, um, so th there's lots of them out there. That's great. Leighton Taylor's, uh, what did you think of Hunter Killer? Oh, that was just awful. I can't think of a better word. When we were chatting uh, very recently about this evening, and um, we, we slight gear change now, Ryan. We were chatting about um, um, people being kind to each other during times of adversity, um, and we were chatting about you know are people being nice enough to each other. And you made you made some interesting observations, specifically about a group of people that that we often don't talk about. In other words, those people knocking on our doors or coming around the back of our homes and leaving leaving parcels and packages, delivery drivers. Um, so do you think we need to be more kind to each other? Yeah, I, I really do. I think I think the um, particularly particularly now, so everybody is angst. I mean, stressed, um, just struggling is, is the only word for it. everybody, I think. Um, and I, I, talk, I talk to the uh, Amazon delivery guy or the DPD, whoever it is who's delivering whatever. I talk to them every time that they deliver something just to find out how they are. And, and uh, you know, it's really interesting because they say, uh, one, one of the guys was saying that very few people ask them how they are and they're there delivering whatever it is we, we need or want. Mm. Um, and th this guy yesterday, I said, how are you doing? And he said, um, he said, I'm really quite stressed because everything was supposed to be um, a lot easier now because kids had gone back to school and, and he, he, he offloaded a bit. And, and I didn't mind listening because at least it gave him 30 seconds to, to, to offload and for me to say, look, just keep focused as best you can and, and keep doing great work. And, and that was all, it was such a small contribution for me to him, but hopefully it helped him on his way. It's interesting, isn't it, that we have this expectation when we click you know, buy on Amazon, for example. There's an expectation that that thing is, if you're a prime customer, that that gift, whatever it is, is going to arrive tomorrow. Boy, oh boy, if it doesn't arrive tomorrow, you know, that the mindset, it's interesting, isn't it, in terms it of is. where, where we are today. Um, so uh, speaking of a, another kind of magic, if you like, in terms of um, a chap called somebody you met, I believe, somebody called David Blaine, Oh yeah, so, so so this is the this is the bizarre thing about lockdown, isn't it? Why would I meet David Blaine? I mean, yeah. I got to meet David Blaine during lockdown via um, and he, uh, you know, I've met some absolutely inspiring people and great people, and got to interact with some. I, I feel humbled by the amount of people I've met, um, and 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 what they do and how how they how they try and make a difference is fantastic. But yeah, David Blaine was really really interesting. As a character, um, and he—he, he, uh, I asked him a couple of questions, and the first question was about it was a leadership-based question because the guy's really influential, isn't he? Yep. And yet, um, it, you know, the amount of people that look at him and watch him and do everything else, but he—the um, he, the reality is, he's just a normal guy in 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 his own mind. So he's a he's a he's a magician, and he's an endurance guy. So I always yep. thought that those endurance things were magic or you know fake but they're not that's him pushing his body to the the nth limit mm. um, and and he doesn't see himself as somebody who's there to influence or lead or change anything he sees himself just as providing entertainment and hopefully pushing people to push themselves which which i thought was fantastic speaking of ice um a question just popped into the chat room oh, yeah. have you ever have you ever broken up or come up through the ice yeah, I have. Yeah, so so um, I only ever want to do that those under ice trips once. Uh, well, I won't ever do one again, but once was enough. Um, so I was on the uh, USS Alexandria, which was uh, American submarine. I was running an exercise between the US and the UK um, back in two thousand and seven. It was so, um, and and I tell you what, the the Arctic is a very strange place. I mean, on a variety of things, and coming up through the ice. It's not like um, uh, what was the film? Ice Station Zebra. Yeah, and it's it's not like K nineteen either. I mean, the reality is it's a very very controlled process of if you've got the ice there or the bottom of the ice. 
ice keel here you bring the submarine and you park it effectively there and just just make sure it's rigidly there and then you put loads of air in which is what forces it to break through um and then and then there you are you you're the only people that have been there nobody else has been there it's amazing you can walk in one place walk anywhere and you'll be the only person that's been there it's your footstep first and then the best bit for me was that uh, they, they, they turn around and tell you say about the polar bears because the polar bears move during the night so you need to be really really careful the polar bears and if you want to go to the toilet you you have they they've arced off this area where you can go so it's protect the ice effectively and so um so you go they give you this routine which says uh, as you're exiting you're supposed to shine this light out of this little hut thing that you're in <clears throat> if there's no eyes then you're all right and you can walk out and go what you need to do but just watch out for the polar bears mm. and i just forgot all about that and just went out i didn't see a polar bear by the way but I, there was this one moment when i was looking up and i could see all the stars in the northern hemisphere and it was just incredible but you'll know about that as well i'm guessing well i kind of hoped that you know when i had my little moment at the north pole back in um april 2002 that um that maybe a sub would punch its way through the ice and come and say hello or something but you know it was, <laughs> <laughs> but we were on board a, a russian uh, sikorsky helicopter so we had this sort of fantasy idea that some russian submarine would appear close by or something but anyway do you know what um really really enjoyed that the the conversation we're having with you thus far we've got about 10 minutes to go grace has okay. just given me a little time check so do you know i think we all recognize that now more than ever i don't think you'll agree with this we all need something to lift our spirits so okay. so let's talk about mission impossible for a second shall we so let's talk about let's talk about a subject that i know for all of our muscle warrior families across the country and probably for most of the nation right now food is an important aspect of our day-to-day -day lives and so tell me tell me ryan what was what was Heston's Mission Impossible, Heston Blumenthal's Mission Impossible? What was yeah. that all about? So um, Heston's Mission Impossible was a, a series, where, a three series where he went into um, British Airways to sort out food on board aircraft into a hospital and then uh, to us on board a submarine. Mm. And um, it was a straight, it was, it was a brilliant experience and he is a, he is a really great guy. Um, some of the stuff he did for us was, was fantastic. But of course, um, so, so, so the way the, the medium works is uh, Heston turns up, says there's a problem. We all say there's no problem. He then works it all out. And it's a, it's a standard format for those type of programs. There's real tension that goes with it. But when he turned up with us, the first thing we did was, yeah, we know there's a problem and we want to make it better. And I've got the best chefs out, but these are the restrictions that they've got. And, and, um, and he, he uh, so there was no tension. We just kept on saying yes to everything he did. <laughs> so, um, so eventually they got rid of the, uh, they swapped out, got rid of, they swapped out the directors and they brought this other guy in and he really created, uh, created the tension between us and Heston. Um, but what he did for us was, was amazing. So he, he gave us um, sous vide uh, as a way of doing yeah. things. Yeah. Uh, he spent some time in my chefs and gave them, um, gave them some some more training they were really good anyway i had one from the savoy hotel he was a sous chef at the savoy hotel and then decided to join the navy so um so he gave them some training as well and he was he was genuinely a nice guy all the way through it it was, it was really good to meet him excellent i mean he's an amazingly talented chef that's for sure maybe we can try and try and get him as a guest for our one of our in conversation with um slots in the future if you know in that we've got him in your uh, your uh, rolodex in your mobile <laughs> i don't think i've got him in there <laughs> I tell you so, one thing he did do. So, so the one thing he did do was he said, if you want to go to the Fat Duck, uh, yeah. anybody in the crew, if you want to go to the Fat Duck, um, you can go. And he kept to his word, which was which was really good. So you, you ring up and they turn around and say, no, we haven't got any spaces for a year. And then you turn around and say, Asian's Turbulent, and they'd, they'd find a room for you. That's, That's the, 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 the magic word, is it? Yeah, Asian's Turbulent. Eight, eight, I don't know whether you can use it now, but you I'll could. Try, I'll try it tomorrow. I'll let you know. I'll try it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I said in my uh, intro a little earlier that you're now a fully fledged muscle warrior, and we're proud to have you on board, which is, which is really great. But, you know, like all of our families across the country who, who possess their muscle warrior t shirts and look after them and wear them with pride, uh, tell me, there's a little story with your your muscle warrior T-shirt. I get embarrassed. Right? I have to say, yes, it is. It's now been moved into the loft. I went around looking for it when, when Michael said, <laughs> "Get the T-shirt out," and um, I couldn't find it in anywhere in 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 my cupboards or hanging up or in my T-shirt drawer. And then a quick discussion 
uh, enabled me to find out that a lot of my clothes have been moved up into the loft. Well, we need to retrieve it from the loft because we're afraid of the moth, mothball, mothballing situation going in the loft. <laughs> um, so listen, final question um, to close off this evening's conversation, Ryan. Who makes you laugh the most uh, in, your, in your life? And, and what is it that makes that laughter emerge? So I, I, I think laughter is really, really important. And, and wherever you can, being happy is just fantastic. And do, do you know, it's really weird. It's not a person. It's memories for me are the one that, and, and generally from the submarine service as well. I spend a lot of time laughing at that. I've got lots of diaries and I, I read back through those di unclassified diaries I hasten to add. But, um, and and I, I used to write all the things that happened. I was reading one the other day and I just, burst out in laughter about how funny that event was at the time and so so those memories for me really really helped me um help me laugh and 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 keep me happy nice and matthew ling said we had pork belly for breakfast yes we did that was right yeah among other things fish soup thing wasn't nice matthew, either. thank you for thank you so much um for that matthew so ryan huge thanks for being such a great guest and you know, if I could ask you, please, and invite you once again to give your best muscle warrior salute and hold it for three seconds, uh, that would be great. Fantastic, thank you so much. For those that don't know, the muscle warrior salute is a visible symbol of hope, courage, right, strength, and unity for all those with muscular dystrophy across the country. And before we finish up, I'd love to get everyone's feedback. So please, as usual, head to the charity's Facebook page where you'll find a survey monkey link 30 seconds of your time, please complete the questionnaire, any comments so we can improve uh, the broadcast experience even more as 2021 unfolds, that would be really, really great. And if you've enjoyed tonight's episode, please, please do make a donation. Um, every penny counts. And knowing that you'll be helping us change lives and give hope through our virtual activities, our virtual muscle dream interventions, thank you, thank you so much. And Ryan, I've got to ask, if you know someone that you think um, perhaps would like to take part in a future In Conversation With episode, please do let me know. Okay, oh. thank you, nice one. And finally, breaking news, drum roll. Okay, we always do the drum roll at the end of uh, an episode. This is a plug for our, our next guest. Now, our next guest, he was born in Hemel Hempstead in the wonderful county of opportunity that is Hertfordshire. For absolutely anyone who watches F1, Formula One, you'll have seen him on the Skypad. He's an F1 pundit. He's a British uh, British racing driver who currently drives in the FIA World Endurance Championship with Jota Sport. He's been an F1 test driver, a Le Mans driver, and he's the current simulator and demonstration driver for the number one F1 motor racing team in the world. Of course, I speak of the Mercedes AMG Patronus F1 team. I speak of Ant Davidson, Anthony Davidson, um, who I'm really looking forward to chatting with on Wednesday, the 20th of January, same time, 7.30 kickoff for an hour. There's the diary date. Big thanks again to our guest, Ryan Ramsey. Thank you so much, Ryan. I'm grateful for your time. Thank thanks, you so thanks for having me on. I really appreciate that. Absolute pleasure. And to Kate and to Sarah and, of course, to Grace in the studio behind the scenes for supporting tonight's broadcast. You guys are amazing. Thank you all so much. Have a great rest of the week. And for now, bye-bye and keep safe. Thank you.